Hey, what's up? It's Jared with Ditch Auto, and I wanted to talk ISO between the A9, new Sony A9, and the A7R2. Now, for me, I've always been chasing ISO performance, I, primarily as a wedding and event photographer and even a corporate event photographer. A lot of times I'm in lower light situations where I need top tier performance out of my cameras. I can't bring in a bunch of artificial light, use big strobes and stuff like that to get the lighting that I need in my shots. So what I need to rely on is natural light in the room and the performance of the camera in higher ISO situations uh, often come into play. So that was my whole reasoning for switching to Sony in the first place. I was shooting with the Canon 5D Mark III and the Sony A7S came out and that just changed the game for me because I was able to shoot in extremely high ISO uh, and get just excellent performance, you know, albeit a lower resolution image, but at least I was able to get a good resolution image in those situations. I then kind of jumped down uh, a little bit further into that, uh, in that Sony life and got another Sony camera and then finally ended up with the A7R2, which has been a great performer for me. Even when the Canon 5D Mark IV came out, I had to try it because I've shot Canon for over 10 years and, you know, the A7R2 just outperformed the Canon 5D Mark IV in low light still, which made me just glad that I switched to Sony. But now we have the A9, and the A9 is uh, more expensive. It has some additional features, um, but a lot of people are wondering whether or not it is worth the price jump, worth, worth even switching from Canon or Nikon or something like that. And the A9 definitely is still in its infancy in, in my experiences with testing it out. I have a big event coming next week. But for me, ISO really came into play last night when I was just kind of screwing around, taking some pictures around my house. I had, uh, we have a little dog at our house and it shreds everything and it had sprawled itself out on the floor asleep and it just had shards of some of its toy that it had shredded all around him. And so I had my A9 with me because I was working on uh, content for another video, um, which I'll link to below on the top five settings to change on your Sony A9. And I took a picture of the dog and it was really low light situation. I had this uh, this Zeiss Loxia 35 millimeter uh, F2 lens on it. So I was shooting wide open at F2. I noticed that the photo looked pretty good. And so I thought to myself, I should go grab my A7R2, throw the same lens on it, put the same camera settings in there and take the same picture and see what the difference is. So now what you're seeing is those two photos and they both look like a low light photo. Uh, you know, they're not fantastic, but they look like a low light photo. If I zoom in, and here's where it really, really stuck out to me. If I zoom in quite a bit to that image, um, usually in those higher ISO situations, you start to see the noise, you start to see um, softness around the edges of things. But with the A9, it was so much better than the A7R2. It really was amazing, the difference between the two cameras. Now, I wasn't thinking that the A9 was gonna be uh, much more of a performer in the area of ISO. Um, you know, yes, it's more expensive of a camera. Yes, it's newer than the A7R2, which is getting a little old by Sony standards. Um, but the A9 outperforms the Sony in low light. So it wasn't just that one photo that I tried it out. I tried a couple of other situations in lower light just to see if it was consistent across the board. And sure enough, the A9 outperforms the A7R2 in low light with ISO performance in every single photo that I tried to take that was the exact. I even switched lenses, tried a couple of different lenses and low light performance and high ISO was much better on the A9 than it was with the A7R2. I still have a lot more testing to go between these two cameras. I wanna see what it's like in real situations, which is why I won't be filming my full comparison video between these two cameras and my full review of the A9 until I've had a chance to do it and a job with it, which I'll be in Seattle next week doing a job uh, for most of the week that involves photography and 4K video shooting. So with that, I will definitely be able to provide a lot better insight, but I wanted to report back that ISO is is improved substantially in the A9 over the other cameras. So if you are team high ISO like I am because of the nature of what you shoot, the A9 is definitely 
a viable option for you should it fit in your budget. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Make sure to click the thumbs up if you liked it and give us a subscribe if you wanna be notified when more videos come out. We definitely have a lot more stuff coming for the Sony A9. Like I mentioned before with those comparison videos, I already have my initial thoughts video up right now and the top five things you should change on your Sony A9 video is coming soon as well. So click that subscribe button so that you could be notified when those videos come out. And if you're interested in an A9, you could support us by clicking on that Amazon link down below in the description of this video. I purchased my A9 through Amazon and got it with Amazon Prime and actually I sprung and did the next day Amazon Prime for $3.99, so can't complain there. So thanks so much for checking out this video. Hope to see you soon here on Ditch Auto. Take care.